Hey everybody. So here's another MakerBot update. I've done a few minor modifications to it so far, but I'm about to do its first major modification. Uh, minor modifications, if you've seen any of the other videos, you probably remember that I've put this clear styrene up here with magnets on the corners. I used to have the magnets on the front of this. I pulled them off, stuck them on the back side, and now uh, I think it definitely looks a lot better having it like this. I've put a bunch of magnets in the floor here, so all of the tools are now magnetized and will stay in place much more easily. And of course the side benefit is that things will stick on the outside with no apparent reason because there's magnets behind there. And just throwing tools in here is nice because they just automatically magnetize to where you need it to go. So uh, this has definitely been a really nice feature so far. Everything just snaps into place really nice and having it so you can just pull the pieces off and slap them back on is really handy. This one I have a little trouble with because it's a really tight fit but it's still relatively possible and of course if another side is off you can always poke it off. Um, another modification that I've made here is I pulled off bubble levels from a couple of my old tripods that I didn't really need anymore and I stuck those on the Z platform here and right now the level is definitely off but that's because this table isn't balanced so I'd like to have two more bubble levels on the far corners here of the other side just to ver total accuracy and of course in this particular instance the table is not level because it's just a drafting table that I set up quick so having another pair of bubble levels or four one for each corner is another ideal that I would like to shoot for and if you're going that far, having at least two bubble levels on the platform itself, there's a modification to make the platform self-leveling. So uh, if anyone, I mean anyone out there knows a source of cheap, small bubble levels, I thought the dollar store might have a tool with bubble levels uh, already embedded in them that I could just rip out. But uh, I haven't had any luck there yet. But I'm still hopeful on that front. Uh, but if anyone here listening knows of a cheap source, I'm talking like a dollar each at most for small bubble levels, let me know. Send me a comment, send me a, a regular contact email through YouTube, I'd be really appreciative of that. So uh, that's it for the minor modifications. The major modification I'm going to do involves the power supply here. So about a third to half of all the people report that these power supplies that uh, come with the MakerBot are on the cheaper end of things. They tend to burn out and blow out, especially if you have a heated build platform or you start putting any accessories inside like lights and anything that has a draw. The included uh, power supply, let's see what the stats are here. It's uh, 400 watts and it's got one 12 volt rail at 11 amps. Really what you need is preferably at a very minimum one 12 volt rail at 15 amps but really ideally what you want is at least two 12 volt rails at 50 amps or 15 amps each. 18 even better and so on. And uh, I had mentioned this really briefly in one of the previous videos when I was building this, I think. And YouTuber Ron Leak One, who uh, runs Dark Horse Studios on YouTube here, is uh, doing some really fantastic work. There's really no other way to put it. He's doing right now some case modifications for computers, and it just takes that sort of. Uh, devotion, hobby, task, whatever you want to call it, to a level that is just beyond anything you can really imagine. So uh, hopefully for the last sec few seconds here I've got his link to his channel. You really got to check this out if you're into computers, if you're into models, if you're into dioramas, if you're into crafting, if you're into anything that involves building stuff, if you're just into sci-fi generally you have to go over to Ron's channel and check out what he's doing with this computer case. 
But the short of it is that Ron saw one of the videos and he offered to send me this power supply. Wattage wise, this is far beyond anything I really need and there's no stat label on it itself. But basically it's 600 watts and let's see where the stats, I believe it's two 12 volt rails at Twenty amps each. Nice. So this guy here is going to be more than enough. It's not so much the wattage, it's all about the amperage. And having two rails is better than one. And anything over 15 amps is just safety room or headroom for when you're running stuff here. So uh, I don't know about Zion, Z-I-O-N power supplies generally, but uh... I'm more than sure that this is going to be totally adequate. A nice little feature is that it's modular, so I can pull out whichever power supply I need with however many that are required and just plug this in and go at it from there. One major design change that power supplies have had, generally speaking, for almost everybody across the board over the last year or two, is that rather than putting a small fan on the back here, they're putting huge massive fans on the bottom or the top depending on how you look at it. Now in this case with the MakerBot, well the top there has the base platform for uh, construction in there so you really can't modify that and if you can see in here the power supply really sits right against the floor and the floor itself is just solid. So what I'm going to be doing here for the major modification is putting this new power supply in and cutting out a hole for the fan and as the room here isn't really all that much maybe a quarter inch at tops I've got some spare wood here and basically I'm just going to create some feet for it so this will give it a good what's that an inch at least probably let's check it out there and it's about three quarters of an inch so that's some pretty good clearance, at least enough to allow the uh, air to flow out of this. And again, Ron, thanks a lot, buddy. This is really, really great, and this is definitely going to be put to some good use here. So I had hoped I had two of these pieces of wood laying around, but I've only got this one. So you can see I've marked it off. It's just about 16 inches long. So I'm going to slice it into fours and basically put one in each corner. And I'll have a little bit of a leg sticking out there on the ends to hopefully give the thing just a little more stability than it might ha not have had otherwise. And while I've got the floor out, I'll be pre-drilling some holes and using screws to hold this in. So that when I do get a different option for the wood here, I'll just pull out these pieces and throw in the new piece. So uh, tools that are going to be required for this modification... Uh, well, I'm going to need this Allen wrench to pull out all of, or as few of, these bolts as possible. I'm going to need my regular Dremel drill for pre-drilling the holes for the screws to attach this wood. I'm going to be using two other Dremel attachments. And that is this little jigsaw kind of thing here to cut this wood up into four pieces. And then I'll be using this nice little buzz saw to actually cut into the bottom platform here and get some really nice cuts. One other thing I'm going to do while I'm at it, I think, is that on the front here I cut out this logo. I had thought that I'd be able to get some better access to uh, the bolt assembly here on the uh, X motor there, but it didn't work out. So rather than just leaving a gouge here like that, I'm probably going to slice down on these lines here and just cut straight across. This doesn't really have any support features here at all, and actually cutting this out may help me with a design idea I have in mind for extending the X platform. And rather than having just a little 4x4 platform here, making it up to 8 inches long by 4 wide, and by extending this out to the front by 2-3 to three inches on each side, be able to get a much, much bigger piece. Uh, won't have the elegance of being fully enclosed in a box, but 
the functionality is really what uh, needs improvement on this thing. MakerBot, I think, in my own opinion, really settled on a mediocre design and just ran with it. There are just so many ways to improve this, and uh, extending the X platform is definitely one of them. So, uh, with that all said, what I'll be doing here is, uh, oh, wrong way. What I'll be doing here is starting to pull the bottom off and pull the back off here. So it's designed to come off really nice and easy. I don't know if there's really any need to show that aspect off here, but uh, basically I'm just going to be doing some unbolting for a while, and I'll catch up with you in a little bit. And before I get too far, one other thing I'll mention is that I was about to tip this over and lay it on its front, but really what you need to do is uh, either pull the Z-platform out or tie it down. So I am electing to tie it down, and I'm hoping a little bit of tape here should be able to do it. If I had some uh, ties handy, uh, that would work out. But basically this is going to flop all over the place, and I don't really want that to happen. But I don't feel like disassembling and pulling it out either. So, uh... Let's see how good I can do with this tape and how strong it really is.